Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy Monday. Happy Monday, happy Monday. Good morning. Welcome to the Reignited Prayer Call. Good morning. Happy Monday. Good morning, honey. Good morning. This joy that I have, the world and give it to me. And the world can't take it. No, 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 no. Can't take it. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Reignited Prayer Call. Good morning, Diane. prayer call this is the day that the lord has made it we shall rejoice and be glad in it good morning katrina good morning good morning to those of you that are on the prayer call line that have called in good morning Good morning, good morning. We're going to get started in just a few moments. Good morning, Tara. Good morning, Shalanda. Good morning, Intercessor Shalanda. Good morning, Lakia. We're going to give it about another minute and then we're going to get started. Good morning, Latoya. Oh, bless God. Good morning, Pastor Shauna. Good morning, First Lady Nina. Good morning. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning, Intercessor Tammy. Good morning. Good morning. Right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started this morning. God bless you this morning. Happy Monday. It is good to be back on the Reignited Prayer Call. Let me see here. Thank, I would like to thank each and every one of you for getting on this morning. I just love it. Everyone giving God their first fruits of the morning. Amen. Starting their day off right. Dear most gracious Father, Lord, just be with me as I go into this message on today that you have given me to give these women of God, Lord God. Lord, decrease me, Lord God, and increase you, Lord God. Let your Holy Spirit just rest, rule, and abide right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. 
We just thank you and we praise your holy and righteous name. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So I am excited. I got this word on yesterday as my husband and I were driving in a car and I was just studying and like, okay, God, what are you going to give me? What are you going to give me? Which way do you want me to go? And um, it's a powerful word, but very powerful word. And I, I don't want to offend anybody on today, um, but this is a powerful word. And I know that this word is for some of you that is that are on the call this morning. So our scripture is coming from 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, and we're going to start at the 15th verse. I'm sorry, the 15th chapter, the 35th verse. And then we're going to go to 1 Samuel 16, 1 through 3. And so 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 35 says, Samuel never went to meet with Saul again, but he mourned constantly for him. And the Lord was sorry he had ever made Saul king of Israel. Okay. And chapter 16, first Samuel 16, verse one through three. Now the Lord said to Samuel, you have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. But Samuel asked, how can I do that? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. Take a heifer with you, the Lord replied, and say that you have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you which of his sons to anoint for me, my God. And so this morning, just as a little thought, I titled this from morning M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G to morning, M-O-R-N-I-N-G. And so in verse 35, it talks about um, the story of Samuel. And, and you guys know Samuel and Saul. And um, Saul was the king of Israel. Israel wanted a king. And Saul was the king of Israel. And Saul did some things he wasn't supposed to do. Um, at the end, towards the end of his reign, he told the Lord told him to go out and fight the Amalekites and, and to kill everybody. Kill everybody. Kill everything. Um, he didn't want nothing living. And Saul went and he, he did that. But he didn't kill um, King um, Agag, I think that's his name, Agag, A-G-A-G. -A -G. He didn't kill him. He decided he was going to bring him back. And um, he also kept some of the livestock. So some of the cattle and some of the different livestock, he kept those things. So he went against what God told him to do. And because of that, God said, you know what? I'm going to take away. He, he He's no longer going to be king anymore because I told him to do something and he did not do it. Right. And so, um, so, so in verse 35, it talks about Samuel mourning for Saul, Samuel mourning for Saul. So the question I have for you on this morning is what are you mourning? What are you mourning? See, sometimes we can stay in a season of mourning a little bit too long. And so I wanted to know, what are you mourning? Are you, and it might not just be mourning a death. And it could be mourning a death. It could be the death of a loved one, of a friend that you could continuously be mourning over. It could be mourning over a loss of a marriage. Maybe, you know, you got divorced and you're still bitter and you're still mourning over that thing. It can be the loss of a relationship or a friendship, and you're still mourning over that thing. It can be the loss of a job, um, the, the loss of, a, 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 like I said before, a parent or a family member. What are you still mourning on this morning? And so in verse 35 as well, it says, the, in, in some versions, it says, the Lord regretted that he made Saul king. And I said, dang, that's hard. That's harsh, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's harsh. The Lord regretting something. My God, like you, God, you gave this thing to me. Now you regret and giving it to me. Have you ever felt that way before? Like maybe you gave your child, you know, a new toy or you let your child go somewhere and do something and something happened. And then you start regretting 
letting them do that thing. Good morning, Kim. Good morning, Justina. Good morning, Vanessa. And you started regretting that thing. And it said the Lord regretted that he made Saul king. And so I tell you what, don't allow the Lord to regret giving you something. The Lord gives us a lot of things, but we don't want him to regret giving it to us, right? We don't want God to regret giving us those gifts and, and, and we're not using the gifts and the talents that he's given us. And so now he's starting to regret even giving it to us. Or maybe we're misusing, mm, my God, maybe we're misusing what God has given us and now God is starting to regret giving it to us. Maybe God gave us that relationship. He gave us that husband and now we're so focused on that husband or we're so focused on those kids or we're so focused on that thing that God has given us that our eyes are now off of him, off of God, and we're focused on the thing, the very thing that he's given us. You know how we pray for something. We pray for it. We pray for the house. We pray for money. We pray for the job. We pray for all these things and then we become obsessed with it, right? It becomes our God, little G. It becomes our God and we've taken our, okay, God, I see how you're taking me, right? So you now you're focused on on that little G instead of be, being focused on God. And now God has regretted giving us that thing. My God, mm, Jesus. And so going down to verse, uh, uh, chapter 16 and, and, and verse, verse one, it says, he said, Samuel, how long are you going to mourn? How long? How long are you going to mourn? See, remember it, we talked about last week, I believe it was in Ecclesiastes, we talked about, uh, 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 it was, it's a season, it's a time, it's a time and there's a season. And the Bible says there's a season to mourn. There's a season to mourn in Ecclesiastes three and four. But then it also says there's a time, there's a time to mourn and there's a time to dance. I'm sorry. There's a time to mourn and there's a time to dance. There's a time to cry. And that's what the book of Ecclesiastes says. Don't overextend your time. Don't overextend your time. And this is for somebody on today. Don't overextend your time in mourning. There's a season for everything. And so the Lord asked Samuel, how long are you going to mourn? So God is saying to you today, how long are you going to continue to mope around? How long are you going to continue to allow yourself to slip into depression and, 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 and start and, and slip into anxiety. I said slip into it because sometimes we bring that on ourselves. Sometimes we bring depression on ourselves. Sometimes we bring anxiety on ourselves. We bring sadness onto ourselves because we just moping around like Igor moping around, moping around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we bring that on ourselves. And God said, how long are you going to do this? How long are you going to continue on mourning for Saul? How long are you going to continue mourning over that situation, over that relationship, over the, the loss of a house, the loss of a job? How long are you going to continue to do this thing, right? And so, you know, sometimes we say, you know, well, I can't go on. I just, I just can't go on without this person. I can't go on without this job. I just, I'm just not going to be able to live anymore. How am I going to live? How am I going to go on? Well, my question to you is today, who are you looking at? Who are you depending on? Were you dependent on that person or that thing? Or are you dependent on God? What are you depending on, right? Because God should be your provider. God should be the one that you're leaning and depending on. God should be the one that you're casting your cares on. So who are you depending on this morning? Are you depending on that person that went into the grave? Now, I'm not saying don't mourn. I'm not saying that there's not going to be any pain, that there's not going to be any sadness, but you can't allow that season to continue on and to linger on. You got to go past that season, my God. So you can't allow the grief to consume your life. You cannot allow the grief to consume your life. You must depend on Jesus. And I've heard it so many times. People say, I can't go on. I can't go on. I'm not going to be, a how you can't go on? That person did that much for you. They did just as much as God that you can't go on. You can't go on in Jesus. And that's the same exact thing that Samuel was doing. And so in verse one, it says that God gives Samuel instructions. So God told Samuel, he said, Samuel, 
He says, I, I, how long you going to mourn? He says, I've rejected him. I've rejected Saul as the king. So what I need you to do is I need you to go fill your flask with olive oil. And I need you to go to Bethlehem and find a man named Jesse because I have selected one of his sons as king. And so he gave Samuel some instructions. And so this morning, God has given you some instructions. What instructions have God given you? God has told you to do something. He's told you to go somewhere. He's told you to get up. It's time to stop mourning. I I'm going to fix this thing for you. I'm going to do this thing for you. But I need you to be obedient. I need you to follow my instructions and, and follow my lead because I'm going to take you somewhere. I'm going to do a new thing, right? And so. In verse two, it, Samuel says, well, 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 how can I go on, Lord? How, how can I do that? If Saul hears about it, he is going to kill me. If he hears about it, he's going to kill me. And so some of you might be asking God, well, I know you told me to do this thing, but how can I continue to go on? How can I make it? If I if I try to move, you know, something's going to happen to me. I just can't move like that. I just can't go like that. I'm not ready yet. And God is saying, oh, you ready. It's time for you to go. And here's your instructions. I'm giving you your instructions to go. So I need you to move and go in the direction that I'm telling you to go into. And so the Lord will give you specific instructions in what he needs for you to do. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to wonder how I can go on. How can I do this? God is going to give you those specific instructions to move on and to go and to follow his directions. My God, my God, if you don't move, it can cause you to miss the move of God. I'm going to say that again. If you don't move on today, and this is for somebody, if you don't move on today, God will allow you to miss his move, to miss his next move. And you don't want to miss the move of God because you're back in mourning, because you're continue to mourn, M-O-U-R-N. You're mourning so much that you're missing what God wants you to do, my God. So it's time for you to move. And so Satan knows that if he can prolong your season of mourning, if he can continue to, if Satan knows that you will continue to stay in your grief and you will continue to be depressed and you will continue to mourn, that he can keep you from moving into the next new thing that God has for you. And that's exactly what Satan wants you to do. Satan wants you to stay the way that you are. He wants you to continue mourning over that thing. He wants you to continue mourning over that relationship, over that death. He wants you to continue mourning over the very thing that you lost so that you will miss the move of God. You will miss the very new thing that God wants to provide for you. You mourning over the old house that was a two bedroom, a uh, uh, thousand square feet, and you about to miss the 5,000 square foot house, the six bedrooms that God has for you because you still mourning, my God. You mourning over the loss of that job that was only paying you $15 an hour. And God says, I got a better job over here for you. I got a job paying $100,000 a year for you, but you still mourning over the old job. I need you to stop mourning and I don't want you to miss the next move that I have for you. My God, Jesus. Uh, 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 Lamentations uh, 3, 22 and 23, it says that through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness, okay? So we cannot allow, you know, we, we can't allow... Uh, uh, to uh, allow the world to consume us. We can't allow the thing that we're mourning over to consume us because he said his mercies are new every morning. My God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So Samuel was in danger of missing the transition from Saul's reign to David's reign. See, Samuel almost missed that transition. If Samuel, if Samuel <clears throat> excuse me, if Samuel had not moved, then he wouldn't be able to go anoint a new king, a king that was better than Saul was going to be, which was going to be King David. And so we may be in danger of missing our next transition in our life, going from mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, to mourning, M-O-R-N-I-N-G. I don't want you to miss your next transition. I don't want you to miss that thing. And in Psalms 30 and 5, we all know it says that weeping may endure for a night, but all joy 
comes in the morning. And that's exactly what the Lord was trying to tell Samuel. Don't, don't miss this transition because I got something better on the other side. In the morning, it's going to be something better. How many of you have cried all night long? There's times that I have cried all night, tears on my pillow all night. But in the morning, it was so much better. It was so much better. I woke up and I was just different. I just felt like some things had came off of me in the middle of the night. My God, just praying and crying in the middle of the night. But in the morning, my God, it was just joy. It was unspeakable joy. And so grieving robs us of our strength, the strength we need to launch ourselves into God's new purpose and our new plan. See, as we're grieving, grieving takes away something from us. You Have you ever just grieved so hard before and you just cried so hard that you didn't have any strength left? You was just tired. You were just tired. All you wanted to do was sleep. Have you ever noticed that grieving and sleep go hand in hand? You just want to sleep because it's taking away all your strength. But see, that's what the enemy wants. He wants to take away our strength because if he takes away our strength, that means we can't fight. We can't fight if he takes away our strength. And so that's what he wants to do. But God is saying, uh-uh, you got to stop grieving, Samuel. I'm telling you, woman of God, this morning, you have got to stop grieving. you got to stop grieving. you got to go with the move of God. It's time for your transition. It's, he's transitioning you into something new. He's transitioning you into something better. He's transitioning you into something different. He's transitioning your mindset. He's transitioning your mindset. And I don't want you to miss that move on this morning. And so if we stay in the wrong season, God's grace can be lifted from us, leaving us vulnerable and weak. So if we miss the transition, God can lift his grace off of us. And we don't want him lifting his grace off of us because if his grace is lifted off of us, we're vulnerable for attack. We're vulnerable. When we're in, when we're grieving and we're giving, giving our way to grief, remember, it's a time. There's a time to weep. There's a time to mourn. There's a time to dance. And if we continue in that season without moving into our next season, God can possibly lift his grace off of us. And then we'll be really attacked by Satan. And, and things will come in and things will come our way. And we're too weak to fight it off. We're too weak to fight that thing off. So we don't want to miss King David while we're still grieving for King Saul. We don't want to miss King David while we're still grieving for King Saul. So I need you to go ahead and move past that grief on this morning. Stop mourning this morning and move into your new morning, my God. And so how do we transition from grief to greatness? How do we make this transition, God? I know you're going to give me the instructions. And so I know I need to be obedient. And that's number one. To re, to, in order for us to move through this transition and go from grief to greatness, we have got to be obedient. We got to be obedient. We have to follow God's plan. See, God gave Samuel specific instructions. He told him to get the oil. He told him to, to, you know, to go down to Bethlehem. He even told him to take a heifer. When Samuel doubted, he told him exactly what to do. And so we got to follow God's plan. We got to follow it and do what he tells us to do. We have to trust God through the transition. We got to trust God through the transition, knowing that he's going to work it all out for us. He's going to do what he said he's going to do. And we can't resist when the Holy Spirit is nudging us. We can't resist it. The Holy Spirit will nudge us and say, okay, I need you to go do this. It's time. I need you to go and get up. I need you to go and do uh, apply for this job. I need you to go in a, in, and apply for this house. Even though the credit don't look good, I need you to go and supply, apply for it. It's all good. I'm going to take care of it. I got this. I know you're in transition, but I need you to trust me. I need you to be obedient. I need you to follow my plan, woman of God. And that's what the Lord is telling you this morning. You got to trust him. The, the Holy Spirit is nudging on you. He's been tugging on you. He's been pulling on your heart this morning, but now it's time for you to be obedient. It's time for you to trust him and follow God's plan. God gives you beauty for ashes. He will give you the life where we have, where, where we have experienced death. God will give you life. Um, in, in Nehemiah 8 and 10, it says, this is my favorite. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And the song I was playing earlier, it says, this joy that I have, the Lord didn't give it and the, I'm sorry, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. My God. And that's so true on this morning. The world 
has not given you your joy. God has given you your joy. God has given it to you. And so it's, it's, it, you go mourn, right? You, you go mourn. And that's okay. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to mourn over the things that you've lost, whether it be something physical, whether it be a person, whether it be material things. That's okay. It's okay from time to time, uh, you know, to, 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 to mourn over your losses. And, uh, uh, but you can't allow the enemy to steal your joy. You can't allow the enemy to let you stay in that place over or past your season because God has a plan. He has something else for you. And you've got to be able to know when it's time to stop that mourning. It's time to start stop grieving. And it's time to move into your next thing. It's time to move into your new morning. My God. And John 10 and 10 says the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come that you might have life. And God wants to give you new life this morning. He wants to give you a new life in him. He wants to give you a new life in the very thing that you've lost. That might have been death, but God is coming to give you life. He's going to replace those things and he's going to replace them even more. And it, 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 even if it was a loss of a loved one, God says, I'm going to be with you. God even, he wept. It says Jesus wept over Lazarus, but he didn't stay weeping over Lazarus. You didn't read down in the scripture after scripture after scripture to say he, could still, he was still mourning over Lazarus. It didn't say that. He went on. He moved on. God had another plan for him and he went on to new and better things. And, 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 and don't get me wrong. You're going to think about him. You're going to think about that person. You're going to think about that thing and from time to time, but know that God is going to give you joy. There's going to be joy down on the inside that even when you think about him, you can have a smile on your face. Have you ever thought about a loved one that you lost? And then, you know, you kind of got sad a little bit, but then you thought about maybe something they did, something they said, and it just brought a smile to your face. My God, a smile to your face. And that's exactly what God's going to do. I even think about some of the things that I've lost, some of the material things I've lost. But, oh, God, he has blessed me 10 times more. He has blessed me 10 times better. And so this morning, this, this morning, I just want to let you know, I want you to go from morning to your new morning. It's time to bring that joy back. It's time to get that joy down on the inside of you. And the only way that you're going to get that joy and experience that joy is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, my God. Thank you, Jesus. And so if there's any of you on this call this morning that say, well, you know what? You know, I, I have been down. I, I, to think of it, you know what? I have been mourning over that thing just a little bit too long. The, the loss that I've had, you know, the, the boyfriend, the husband, maybe I, I've, I lost a friend or a relationship or a friendship. Me and, this, me, and, me and this girl, we were die hard. We were hope to die and now she's gone. You know, not she might not be gone to death, but you're just not friends anymore. Maybe God cut that off for a reason. You know, maybe you've lost a job or, 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 or you lost finances, some kind of financial situation. You've lost money on a certain thing. Well, God is telling you this morning that he can restore those things to you. He can transition you into something new. That it's time to stop mourning over that old thing because God has a new king. He has something new and better for you. And all you have to do is go to him, repent and say, God, maybe I was in this season a little bit too long. Maybe I was dwelling around this thing a little bit too long. I was walking around this thing a little bit too long. And now it's time for me to move into my new thing. And so of course you can go to him, go to him in prayer, go to him on your knees and say, God, I need you to help me get out of this morning. It's time for me to get, stop mourning over this thing and move into the new thing that you have for me. My God, thank you, Jesus. I pray that there was a word said to you this morning that can take you on just a little bit further. We're going to go ahead and bow our heads. Dear most gracious Father, Lord, we just thank you, God. We thank you for new mercies, God. We thank you for compassion, God. We thank you for your grace, God. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you're going to do, Lord God. We just thank you for just for loving us, oh God. Loving us even through the morning season, Lord God. Through the season of grief, you still love Loved us. You never leave us, left us, and you never will forsake us, oh God. And we thank you for that. On this morning, God, I ask that you just continue to be with each and every person who might be grieving today, Lord God. Grieving over that thing that they have lost, God. Lord, we know that you're going to replace it. We know that you're going to give it to us brand new, Lord God. We know that you're going to even make it better than it was before. And we thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, I'm touching and agreeing with each and every woman on here on today, Lord God, that they're going to move into their transition 
transition. They're going to make their transition. And during that transition, God, they're going to trust you, God. They're going to be obedient, God. And they're going to move just how you say move because they know that you're going to give them the plans to move, oh God. You're going to give them the right instructions just like you did, Samuel. You're, you're going to give them those instructions to move how you want them to move on today, Lord God. And we thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. They're going to move with boldness, God. They're going to move with just with, 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 with just a whole brand new uh, 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 mind, mindset and a brand new thinking, Lord God. You're going to change their thinking. You're going to transition their thinking on this morning, God. And we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you go through um, with us throughout today, oh God. Be with us as we're on the highways and byways, Lord God. Lord, let us all come back home to our families and find our families safe and well, Lord God. Lord, I pray right now for the people of Dallas, Lord God. There was a tornado last night, so I pray for each and every family in Dallas, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for covering my daughter and her husband on today, Lord God. Thank you for their, for their protection, that they're safe throughout this tornado, Lord God. And so we thank you, God. We praise you, God. We give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I would like to thank each and every one of you for hopping on this morning to the Reignited Prayer Call. Share, you guys. Share this out. Thank you for those who have already shared. Continue to share this call out so that we can get out this message of the Lord to our women around the world, around the world. Not just locally, y'all. I said around the world. I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in this morning, and we'll see you back on here tomorrow morning at 530. God bless.